Hello, Dr. Todd Perry here. So you've had your knee replacement, you've gone through the initial stages of physical therapy, and now we're getting a little bit stronger. Uh, we've compiled a couple of exercises here that I want you to watch through, and as you feel ready, start adding different exercises. Listen to your body, listen to your knee. If it's not ready for that exercise, back off and try it again next week. Uh, but these group of exercises are again designed to help take you the next step. When we've started to get our motion back, you're feeling better, and we want to start that that strengthening process. So watch through these and, and add exercises as you feel able, uh, but watch them a couple times so you make sure you're doing in a, in the appropriate form and fashion to avoid injury. So in this uh, little video segment, we want to do some more advanced uh, knee strengthening exercises. After you've had your total knee replacement, you've gone through physical therapy, you've obtained your motion, this is where we want to do A lot of people come and say, all right, I've finished with physical therapy, what kind of things can I do on my own? First key, we have to get full extension and be working on that flexion. Flexion will keep improving for many months. Extension, you really want to get that straight. So make sure you've accomplished those things. If you haven't, continue to pretend I'm sitting down in a, in a chair watching TV. You want that leg out on the coffee table and you want to be pushing you want things resting on that. You want to get that full extension, okay? Because if you walk with the knees just a little bit bent, your quad muscles have to be involved, okay? If you walk around the mall for two hours like that, that's a lot more energy than if you can lock them out. So work on that full extension. Get them back past 110 degrees. 110 degrees is what you need to get off the toilet without any extra effort to go upstairs one at a time in a nice smooth fashion. So we're shooting for 0 to 110, anything beyond 110 is kind of gravy. Another great thing to do is non-impact activities. Get on an exercise bike, a stationary bike, or if you're, you're good and you've got a good place to ride, get out, and, get out in nature and ride a bike, okay? Elliptical machines, those are very good. And swimming pools, we've got a whole series on just uh, exercises in the pool. But be involved in those non-impact activities, get into some hiking, some things to get yourself going, as well as what we're going to show you here now. So one of the things we got to have as we progress is make sure you have adequate pain control. If you need pain medicines, continue to use them. I'd rather use pain pills so you can do more and be active than to say, oh, I'm totally off pain pills, but I hurt too bad to go out and do the exercises I need to do. Ice, really key, and rest when you need it, okay? Don't overdo it. Listen to your knee. Some people can get on that exercise bike and, and really kind of go. Other people, that friction flares them up and they have to just do a couple minutes and slowly build from there. Listen to your knee as you're doing these activities. Okay, so let's start. Keep stretching, okay? If this is my replaced knee, work on getting that back. Work on getting those Achilles stretched out, okay? The Achilles, that gastroc muscle crosses the knee joint. That's gonna be a little bit tender. You wanna work on stretching it. You wanna work on firing, doing a lot of, okay, heel raises. Get that calf muscle really fired. We want to get all the muscles above and below and surrounding that knee toned. So it's not just the quads that we need to worry about. We've got to get everything. We've got to get the glutes in there. We've got to get the adductor muscles that are pulling. We've got to get the muscles that support the knee. Everything's going to be important. Now, if you've got uh, adequate strength, go over against the wall, just like we all did when we were kids and we were getting ready for ski season. We'd come over and we'd sit against that wall. And we would just, in this, just work those quads and work those glutes a little bit. Come in and get so you can sit against that wall. If you're worried, have something to get you out. Don't go too deep. But you can get right here and really kind of feel that burn. Start working those quads. Afterwards, we'll go upstairs. We'll start working on some different squats. One thing that I like is to also work the adductor, okay, the in, inside muscles of your quads. You're gonna put that, a little ball between there, you're gonna squeeze with your knees. Squeeze together as you do a little bit of a squat. Squeeze as you do a squat. You can squeeze as you're sitting down, you can squeeze as you're laying down, you can squeeze as you squat. Any of those things will kind of do. Now, let's get down on the ground. Pretend you're just on your ground at home, okay? And we wanna work the stabilizing muscles. If this is, we wanna do all, you wanna do both legs, but pretend this is my injured knee. We're going to work on those hip abductors, okay, bringing it out and away. If that's too easy, we can put a rubber band around there. You can put a two-pound ankle weight. But again, at this point in our recovery, we just want to, hey, if I can do 50 of these, that's what I'm after, okay, just kind of coming in and doing that. Now we're going to work that same leg, or excuse me, we're going to work the other leg 
and work the lifting muscles, the adductors, okay? So you can kind of do that as well, okay? Now, how can we work our hamstrings without having those fancy machines? Well, there's some things we can just do uh, here at home, simple. One, lay flat, okay? So if I'm just laying flat, and I just lift my pelvis up, get that up off the ground, and hold right here, my hamstrings are a part of that, okay? Now, if I want to make it a little bit tougher, I'll hold one leg up, okay? Now, this one is really having to squeeze and do a lot to keep me up, okay? So again, you can switch over and kind of hold that right there. That is really going to also kind of work that hamstring. Now, if you start getting a little bit more advanced, put your feet on a ball, okay? Roll that ball in and then roll it out. Roll it in and roll out. Use your hands to really stabilize you here. And just kind of roll in through there or again. Just lift yourself up, hold that thing. You can alternate those legs or you can just stand here with both legs, lift that up, rest for a while, lift that up and go again. Okay, you can get up on your toes, kind of work those calf muscles as well during this process, but that'll help with the hamstrings. One other thing we can do for hamstrings while we're kind of, kind of down here is use our hamstrings to kind of tilt and pull us up right here, okay? I like to just get a very light kettlebell, kind of keep your legs, knees just a little bit bent, but mostly we're going to hinge at that waist, boom, and flex on as we come on up in here, okay? Now we don't want to round our back like this. We want to keep the back straight and just pivot at the hip and come on up, okay? Pivot at the hip and come on up. And if you just get a 10 pound weight, I guarantee the first time you do that that next day, you're really going to be quite sore in that hamstring. So those are some good things to just work on to stabilize here. Now let's go talk about some ways to work on our quads. Okay, so now we've completed the exercises down on the floor and some of the strengthening for our advanced uh, knee replacement exercises. Now let's move over to the stairs. And first we can use those to stretch, continue to emphasize that we get that full extension and we're working on flexion, and then we'll work into some strengthening. So I like it where we have two things to hang on to, and that's why we came down here. I've got a crutch that I'm going to use as my one handrail because I only have a handrail on one side, and then I have a handrail on this side. Let's take this as my knee replacement side. I'm going to put that up, and if I can, I'll start off on the second step. Put your hand wherever you feel, feel like that's going to give you the support, and work on a bend. Use your body weight to bend into that knee and kind of force some more flexion. Okay, if you can't go up on the second step, go up on the first, put that toe right up against the, uh, the second step there, and do the same thing. Use your body weight to give you a little bit more flexion. Okay. Also, I'm kind of holding that stance. I'm working a little bit of the quad here as well, which is what we want to do. Once we've worked that, and we'll do both legs, putting our replaced knee back, putting the other one forward, and now here, what am I doing? I'm stretching my Achilles tendon back there. I'm trying to keep that knee straight as I bend forward. So we're also working on that extension here. Now is what we really want to do, is start working on going up and down stairs smoothly. Okay. With the therapist, you've probably gotten to where you're going one, uh, one leg up at a time, one leg down at a time. And again, what do you do? Up with the good, okay, one at a time, and down with the bad. So again, if this is my knee, this is my replaced knee and I'm going downstairs, I'm going to lead, okay, oh, I'm going to lead with the bad, bad leg going down. Why? Because this is the leg that really does all the work when I'm going down. So I lead down with my bad leg, okay down with my bad leg. Now, we want to go up and down smoothly one step at a time. Let's start working on that. This is my replaced knee. I'm going to put it here. I am going to go up smoothly, okay? I am going to come down smoothly. And sometimes that down is what's harder. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Go slow, okay? Work that quad muscle and those glutes as you're pushing up and then as you're coming down. And you can do that one. You can bring both feet up kind of whatever feels better for you and kind of work and exercise that. Okay, so that's a great way to do it. Another way to do it is kind of working sideways. And so I can face you, we'll kind of pretend this is my replaced knee. And I can work on it going sideways, just pushing up right here and coming down, okay? Just pushing up and then controlling, coming down slowly, slowly, slowly. 
I've got a cane, I've got something here, whatever's going to work for you for support, okay? That right there is really going to work that quad so that we can get to go up and down the stairs smoothly at one time. Okay, now we're going to move upstairs and work on some different squatting positions. So now we've moved up to where we have something we can grab onto. We've got a banister here, really solid. I like it because I can kind of cup that and I can use it to help pull me up if I need it. Now we're going to use our body weight just to work on some general squats, okay? Uh, so right here, we've got that to hold on to, go up and down. Now I'm going to move another place to do this is in the kitchen, okay? Everybody's got a kitchen sink that we can grab onto. Um, so let's move in and try that. Okay, now we've moved into the kitchen. Everybody's got a kitchen sink. We can kind of cup our hands over, use it to help pull us up right here. Okay, now again, we're using our body weight, which we all have at home. Okay, we don't need any special equipment to work on strengthening this replaced knee that we have right here. Okay, so again in front, feet about shoulder width, maybe just a hair wider. Get a good grip right here and start doing little mini squats. Really push off of your heels. You want to kind of sit into this and use your heels, pushing off your heels to do that squat, okay? You can do them slow, you can try and pump off 10 of them pretty quick, mix it up, okay? You wanna mix that up. Now, I put this chair here, good idea, just bring that here. You can sit right down and take a rest, okay? As we're, as we're building up. So you bring that chair in, you've got that option. Another thing I like is as you start getting more advanced, we all cheat when we put both legs on the ground. We are always going to use our stronger leg to do more of the work. If we can isolate our bad leg, that's the only way I think we truly focus on it. So when you get a little bit stronger, lift your bad leg up. You've got two hands on here for balance. Leave your lifted leg close to the ground to protect yourself and start doing that one at a time, okay? Just use just that leg. Even if you can only go down this far, okay, that really engages that quad. And when you're on one leg, it actually engages your, your hips and your gluteal muscles a little differently. It works a different muscle than if I'm totally balanced, which is what we're after, stabilizing that whole leg. So get on one leg, same idea. Little single leg squats, whatever you can do. If you get so you can go way down, Wonderful. If all you ever do is this, that's okay. You can also mix that up and you can do a little bit of a lunge, okay? One leg at a time kind of coming forward. I can use my hands to push off if I need to. And we've got that to work on. We can work on just one leg balance, okay? Again, good thing to do. Just stand on that one leg, get your proprioception, you're knowing where you are in space, and just kind of work on that. I've got everything here to catch myself but we've got to get so we can work on that balance as well. So those are some advanced things we can do uh, to work on continuing to strengthen our, our quadriceps, our glutes, getting that leg back where we want it to be so that you can function normally and make that total knee uh, last for you and get you back to pickleball, golf, all the things you want to do.